Hi, this is Bryce with Phytech Fuel Injection. This week on Tech Tuesday, we're gonna show you the setup of an Ultimate LS system and how to set up the engine and transmission in the handheld. We're in a 1965 Pontiac Le Mans and we got a 5.3 liter LS engine with a 4L60 transmission. We're gonna show you how to go through the handheld and set it up. Prior to getting started, check for fuel leaks, but for your first key on, on the system setup, we wanna put full throttle on the gas pedal to go into clear flood mode before we cycle the key on. Wait for the fuel pump to cycle. Once it shuts off, we could let our foot off the gas pedal That'll prevent any fuel from going into the engine, so we can load the base calibration. First, we're going to go on our handheld and go to the very bottom of the main menu to Write Cal to ECU. We're going to open that up. We have a few options here. We got 24X tooth reluctors and 58 tooth X reluctors for different uh, engine combinations. And then we also have the 4L60 or 4L80 variant. If you have a manual transmission, just load the 4L60 version. Since we're running a 4L60 on this one and it's an early 5.3, we're going to load the 24X 4L60 version. Now that our calibration is loaded, we're going to go into our initial setup menu and go to engine setup. We have our 36 pound injectors, so we're going to drop this down to 36 send to ECU, 425 cubic inches for the 5.3 liter. We got a stock cam in this engine, so we're gonna leave it there on number one. Our rev limit is at 6,000 RPM, which is fine, and a 650 RPM idle, which is perfect for the setup. If any of these differ for your application, like you got a six liter or you're running the 55 pound injectors, just change them, just be sure to hit send to ECU on every setting you change. Now that we got that section set up, we'll go to our fan and AC inputs. We have our fan one on and off temperatures. Just make sure that your fan on is higher than your fan off. These are set up pretty well for our application and it should be good for most setups. If you're running an AC, you can enable or disable and you can even tell it to turn on the fan of fan one if you turn on the AC. Since this car does not have AC, we're gonna leave everything off right now. We're gonna disable our AC input, and then we'll go down to auto transmission so we can set up our transmission. We get to put in our tire diameter, which this vehicle has 26 and a half inch tires, we have a 373 rear end. You can click right, or we can even go to edit and type it in ourselves. I'll send that. Force upshift is the RPM that is maximum for the gear to shift to the next gear. 6,000 RPM is the default. You could lower that if you like, if you want to uh, shift sooner, or if you have a higher revving motor, you can go up higher. Now for your transmission. 4L XOE trans, if it's set to other, that is set up for a manual transmission or a turbo 350, something that the computer is not controlling. Being that we're using a 4L60, we're gonna go to option 4L XOE and turn it on. Now our trans control section is on. The next one is for a 4L60 or a 4L80. Since we're running the 4L60, we're gonna leave it there. The shift RPM reset is not used right now because we're just getting started, but if we ever wanna reset the shift upshift, we'll be able to reset it right there. The shift RPM learn is the computer's ability to learn what the max shift RPM is. So even though we have it set to 6,000, it'll allow us to let the computer learn and it may start dropping it 50 RPM at a time to force your upshift a little bit sooner. 
Next is our brake input. If you have a brake switch in the vehicle, you want to hook it up here and it allows the computer to immediately know to unlock the uh, torque converter clutch. I don't have it set up in this vehicle, so we're going to shut that section off. If you have one, just be sure that the brake switch is 12 volts constant, zero volts when the brake is applied. In older cars, it's usually the opposite direction, so you may need to wire a relay in to make that adjustment. Once we get all that input, if we want to run our tack and speedo, we can open that up. It's set up for our speedo from Cal. So since we have it tied into our dash, we want to turn that on. We'll leave the corrections alone right now. The four cylinder GM tack. So later model GM vehicles run in a four cylinder mode. Being that we're using an aftermarket dash, it's going to be wanting to be off. Since we're not reading in four cylinder mode, we'll read in eight cylinder mode. To make sure that we get tack to the dash, we're going to be sure to turn that on. Turn it on from Cal, and that's a setup in that menu. This system has the dual O2 sensors, so we're going to make sure it's on dual bank. If you have a single bank, you'll go to single, and it will take the split out of it and fuel evenly from bank to bank on the engine. Knock control is the next one. You usually don't need to mess with that unless you want to start doing PC tuning. And then your nitrous input, we're not using nitrous at this time. Now that we got this set up, we'll go into our dashboard, we'll key off, wait for the values to disappear. That gives us a sign that the computer is saved. Now that we're saved, we're ready for our first start. So we'll key on and crank. So now that we got the engine fired up and running, we want to run it up to full temperature, in this case up to about 190 degrees. We'll do our throttle adjustment. We have a video on how to set your IAC steps. So I checked that one out. It's the same for our throttle body injection as it is our LS. And then we'll be able to go out and drive the vehicle. With the transmission control setups, we have a base calibration put in. So there's already shift points and shift firmness put into the computer. So you should be able to drive and it will shift normally. Later on in another video, we're gonna show you how to adjust those shift points and shift firmnesses. Just a quick tip for everyone. In the handhelds, there's a large gauge menu. We can go in here and we can turn on some large gauges just so we can see what's going on. I got our large gauge on and our shifting and gear selection. So we're gonna open that up. We got our gauge cluster. And then we have our current gear so we can see this system shifting gears in the transmission. So here we go. So as we drive, the transmission should shift. If the transmission control setup is not correct, it's going to be stuck in a single gear. So there you have it. Those are the basic setup parameters to get your ultimate LS system going. Be sure to hit send to ECU on every selection change you make. And then if you want to set up your transmission 4L60, be sure to go from other to 4LXOE. That is the biggest piece to make sure that the transmission is turned on. Thank you for tuning in. And on next week's FiTech Tech Tuesday, we're going to show you some of the tuning involved on an Ultimate LS system. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment them down below. If you're interested in getting any cool hats or t-shirts, please visit FiTechEFI.com 